Now is the turn for the muscles of the forearm. So we're going to describe the muscles in your forearm, the anterior compartment. So they're crossing anteriorly in the front, the wrist and the joints in your, in your hands and fingers. And uh, these muscles are arranged in two layers. So this is a cool moment to bring back these old pictures, the ones we described in your lecture. So, mm, 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 mm. okay, this is a cross section through the forearm. So in here you can see the radius on the same side of the antenna of the radius and the ulna. So this is radius, this is ulna. All of these muscles anteriorly uh, or located anterior to these bones are, look at the face, are uh, the anterior compartment, all the muscles posterior to those bones, posterior compartment. So let's go to the anterior. Look at this line in here. This fascia uh, divides the, uh, this muscle into a deep layer closer to the bones and a superficial layer closer to the skin. Okay, All of these muscles, since they cross anteriorly the wrist and uh, the wrist joint and all the joints that we have described on your hands and fingers, they can flex the wrist, they can flex the fingers. All of them with one and a half exception. The rest, all of them are innervated by the median nerve, okay? Except one and a half, I'll tell you later, is innervated by the ulnar nerve. Now, in the posterior compartment, we're going to find the extensors. So these muscles are going, again, they're organized in two layers, uh, a uh, superficial layer closer to the skin and a deep layer closer to the bones. Uh, and these muscles are extensors, so they are going, since their, their tendons are crossing posteriorly the, uh, the wrist joints and all the joints that we describe in your fingers and hands, they can extend the wrist or hyperextend it and extend the uh, fingers. All of them, no exception, are innervated by the radial nerve. Easy. Okay, let's describe those muscles. I, years ago, I watched a video in YouTube of a guy explaining the muscles so easily, the muscles of the uh, forearm with this mnemonic, and I adopted that mnemonic uh, um, from that day on. So here it goes. The superficial layer, we're in the anterior aspect of the forearm, we're going to describe first these four muscles, okay? One, two, three, and four. Um, and he describes it like that. PF, PF, pass, pass, fail, pass, fail, okay? All of these muscles in the anterior compartment have a common origin, okay? They uh, originate all of them in the medial epicondyle of the humerus. This is medial, this is lateral. Look at the thumb. So the first P is the pronator teres. It goes from the medial epicondyle to the mid shaft of the radius. Action pronate your forearm. Second muscle is the flexor F, flexor carpi radialis. So carpi, draw it all the way to the carpus on the side of the radius and insert here in the second and third uh, base of, or in the base of the second and third metacarpal. The third uh, muscle is this one, which is the P palmaris longus, who ends in this palmar aponeurosis. Okay, so palmaris longus is a flexor only, okay? Oh, didn't tell you the function, the action of flexor um, carpi radialis, it flexes the wrist, but since it's located on the radial side, it can also, you, when you pull it, you can, you can uh, abduct or radial, uh, produce radial deviation of the uh, hand. Now, the fourth muscle now we're in the ulnar side. This is the uh, the fourth 
one, two, three, the, uh, the second F, flexor carpi ulnaris. So you go through the carpus and uh, in the PC form and insert this muscle in the fifth metacarpal, in the base of the fifth metacarpal. Okay, so this one, same analysis that we apply on the flexor carpi radialis. So this one can flex the, uh, the hand of the wrist because the tendon is crossing this joint anteriorly. The sense is located on the medial side. When you contract this bone, uh, this muscle, you can perform adduction or ulnar deviation. Okay, so when you lift, let me explain that first. The mnemonics that he uses is that, or the, the way he explains it, is that he plays his thumb in the medial epicondyle, and that's your common origin, okay? Medial epicondyle, and you place the four fingers like that. The first one, P, F, P, F. First P, pronator terrace, so pronate your arm. Second, on the same side of the radius, is the flexor carpi radialis, okay? It goes in third in the second and third metacarpal. It flexes the wrist and radial deviation. Palmaris longus, the third one. It goes all the way in the middle to the palm of your hand, so it just flexes the wrist. And the fifth, uh, I'm sorry, and the fourth muscle on the same side of the ulna is the flexor carpi ulnaris. So it flexes the wrist and performs ulnar deviation or adduction of the hand. Easy. So all of these nerves, as you can see, all of these muscles, as you can see, are innervated by the uh, median nerve, except one, of course, the monogram one ulnaris. Okay, so flexocarpi ulnaris is innervated by the ulnar nerve. So we, here we have one of those one and a half exception. Done? Okay, now let's remove this image. I'm gonna go back. Okay, we're gonna remove this image to see a layer. It's like I'm peeling all of these muscles that I just explained, PF, PF, okay, to go to another F. So pass, fail, pass, fail, fail. Uh, this, in, this intermediate layer, we are going to find one muscle, again, same origin, in the medial epicondyle of the humerus, crosses the elbow joint, right? And goes, look at the tendon, you all, that's the way you identify the muscles in your exams and, and quizzes. You need to follow the tendons, okay? So see that this one is split in four, so it's a flexor because it's in the anterior compartment, it goes to the digit, so let's call it digitorum, okay? Uh, and it's a superficialis because we have a deeper one. So flexor digitorum superficialis ends only on the middle phalanx of your uh, digit from the digit two, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, okay? Only onto the middle phalanx. So when we contract this muscle, we can flex the wrist, but also we can flex the fingers like that. Let's say bye bye. Okay. Innervation is given by the uh, medium nerve as well. Now, when we removed the, imagine that we cut now the flexor digitorum superficialis, we're going to find now the deeper layer or the deep layer of the anterior muscles of the forearm. Now we are see, we're seeing more bones and less uh, muscles. Okay, let's describe these muscles. I like the blue. So we have flexor digitorum. In here we have flexor digitorum profundus, flexor pollicis longus, and pronator quadratus. Okay, so flexor digitorum profundus uh, originates right here in the surface of the ulna part of the interosseous membrane. And the thing is that follow the tendons again is digitorum. Okay, so the digitorum muscles is split in four tendons, but this one, the uh, profundus, ends in the distal phalanx. So when you contract this muscle, you're going to flex the wrist, but also you're going to flex the tip, the, the interphalangeal joint. Okay, so now you can close all your, uh, your fist. Uh, we need 
we have flexors for all the, the digits, two through five, we need one for the thumb. So flexor pollicis longus originates in the anterior surface of the radius and part of the interosseous membrane, follow the tendon towards the, the thumb, and this one um, inserts on the distal phalanx as well of the thumb. Okay, so now we can close entirely your, uh, your fist. So see, flexor digitorum superficialis close the fist just like this. You know, flex the wrist and close the, flex the fingers like that, like bye-bye, okay? Flexor digitorum profundus, like this. Flexor digitorum profundus now flexes the distal, inter, the distal interphalangeal joint. Now I can close my fist. Flexor pollicis longus flexes the pollux. Now I have my fist. Why do I need to punch you? <laughs> Pronation. For that, I have the pronator quadratus. And pronator quadratus is this quadratus uh, muscle, you know, like a square muscle that goes from uh, radius to, uh, to, from ulna to radius and pronates the forearm. Okay, all of these muscles are innervated by the median nerve as well, with one exception, with actually half of this muscle is the exception and it's the flexor digitorum profundus. So uh, flexor digitorum profundus, the, I'm going to put it here in another color. So the half of this muscle, the medial half of this muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve. Okay, the lateral part of this muscle is innervated by the medial nerve as all of these muscles, okay? So, all of those muscles that we have covered in this video, in the anterior compartment, in the superficial, in the intermediate, and in the deep compartment, all of them are innervated by the medial nerve except by the flexor carpi ulnaris and the ulnar half of the flexor digitorum profundus, that they are innervated by the ulnar nerve. Now we have covered all of these muscles in this uh, video, okay? And we describe these three images. Those are the images that are going to use on the exams and quizzes. And these are the movements that we have described so far uh, performed by these muscles. So pronation of the forearm, okay, pronation of the forearm is provided by pronator teres and pronator quadratus. Flexion of the hand of the wrist. All of these muscles can flex the, the hand of the wrist. All of them except the pronators because they do not cross the wrist. All of the tendons, all of the, the muscles, the tendons of the other muscles are crossing anteriorly the wrist. A B duction. Well, we have flexor carpi radialis, right? This one. On the same side, abduction radial deviation, right? Uh, this one. Uh, adduction of the hand of the wrist. Now, in this side, we have the flexor carpi ulnaris, ulnar deviation. That's it. See you in the next video. We're going to describe now the posterior compartment.